So today, we're gonna to be showing you how we install gutter on a house that has no fascia board. Hi, my name is Jens from Multiform Gutters. Uh, we're here again with New Tech Machinery doing a video and showing you how we install gutter on a house that has no fascia board like we did on the previous video where we installed gutter that has fascia board. So the first thing we did when we came to this house, it's a renovation. So that means we had to take the old gutter off and then we installed new gutter on this place. The nice thing about a fascia gutter uh, where you don't need to apply fascia cover is that when you install the gutter, the depth of the gutter is enough to cover up the two x four and also the soffit. So once we had all the gutter down, uh, the old gutter, which you can see behind me here on a big scrap pile. Uh, we uh, measured the whole place, I measured the whole house, all the outlet locations, where the downpipes go. On this house, we had a few long pieces of gutter. So when you're measuring in a piece from outside to outside corner, make sure that you go at least an eighth longer uh, on your measurement, because when you install it, you want the pieces of gutter to fit in properly. Um, that's on outside outside when you're going let's say from an inside to an inside where we have corners here as well um, you don't make it too long else you're fighting and struggling to get it in uh, make sure that you go maybe a little shorter and you do all these measurements before so when the guy installing it has a perfect piece of gutter to install usually when we're on a gutter job one of us is on the machine making the gutter while the other person uh, like on this video max was installing the gutter this is a very efficient way of working because while you're making the person is putting it on making it way the job way faster so once we had our gutter made we looked where our outlets locations are which is very important and then on the front of the house there's a section that was a bit harder to install so what i did is i already built it on the ground together with the sealant already in the corner and then we put it up and then started working ourselves, sloping it towards the outlet. This is a very important factor when you're installing gutter. So there was quite a bit of footage on this house, but the good thing that is that we installed high flow funnels, which means that your outlet is bigger, um, making the water easier going down the spout, meaning uh, it can take way more volume of water. Now Max will explain how to install a piece of gutter and what screws we use and the spacing that we have on the hangers. So today we're here installing fascia gutter on a 2x4 fascia and first thing we're going to want to pay attention to is where the outlets are and the outlet in this case would be in that corner right there. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put this piece on and make sure that it's sloping towards the outlet slightly. And it's a 13 foot piece so one man should be able to handle this fairly easily. So what we're first going to want to do is hook this corner with that hook into the other gutter. We're going to want to somehow get underneath the shingle and hook that gutter so it's nice and hooked. And then we know that that side is good. And then we kind of hold it with one hand. And then when you screw it into the middle, you want to first check that corner on how high you are with the gutter there. And then not put the corner too low, but raise it more up to what you have about that side. Once you've screwed this screwed in, you can go to each corner and check that corner and this corner if the gutter pieces fit well. In this case, the brackets are spaced 18 inches apart. Usually we do two feet, but in this case we'll do 18 inches just so that it's stronger and more stable. And for the screws we're gonna be using to screw in the back is one inch regular screws. First off, we wanna check if the corner fits good with the other piece. So by doing that, you just put them together, you hold them together, you check out the corner, make sure it's nice and good. And once you got that, you wanna put a screw in this hanger, the first hanger, one screw in the back, and one screw in the flap on this side. and a screw on this side.
Now the screws I'm gonna be using at the top here is a stainless half inch screw. So I'm gonna take this half inch, I'm gonna fit this corner nicely together, and then I'm gonna chase it through the top into the other gutter as well. Uh, stainless would be a good choice for this area because it's, more the, it's on the face and it would be showing for anyone that walks by and sees the gutter. And when you use stainless, it doesn't rust and it doesn't look ugly even after time. And for the corner, at the face, we're gonna put a screw in and the screw size is gonna be stainless four and a quarter because in time, as the weather changes, the gutters like to move and the corners like to split apart. So when we put a screw in the face, the gutters will be nice and tight and with the silicone as well, it won't be moving anywhere. So you're gonna to wanna to line up the gutter pieces, choose the flap that you're gonna put the screw into and slowly start putting the screw in. Now, once you got the corner all set and done, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to check on the face shell how high you are with the gutter. And then you're gonna to wanna to come back to your center screw and you're gonna to wanna to put a level in it to make sure it's sloping. You blow off the back of the gutter to make sure that the level is sitting perfectly on the gutter. And then you readjust your slope from here. Perfect. All right, once you got the piece adjusted and leveled, you're just gonna walk in and screw every single screw into the bracket. On this house, we had a couple very long runs. One of them was 58 feet, another around 60 feet. Um, the way we install these long sections, usually we have two guys. We set the ladders up roughly between the middle and the end. And then once we got those set up properly, uh, we get the piece of gutter lifted up and then we carry it to the location where we want to install it. The best way, because you can't really know exactly where it's going to go, uh, is we kind of roughly eye up where it's going to sit. We tack it on, then we go to the ends and look if the flaps are in a good lo location. If they're not located well, we just take the screws back out and move it where we need to go. A good thing to remember is when you're making gutter and you've made a cut, uh, is to not use that cut on your next gutter piece. Make sure that you recut the piece of gutter that you want to make. Because if you don't recut your piece, it won't be very precise once you have to put it together. A very important note also is when you're applying sealant to the corners is that you take your time. Make sure you get a nice solid bead down the middle, make a nice spread like it will show you because that's the most likely spot where it'll leak. So make sure that you take your time on that. Hey guys, now we want to show you how we seal a corner. And this is the product that we use. It's called Tremco 830. It's a thermoplastic sealant. The really good thing about this is that once you apply it and it dries, um, you can come back, let's say in whatever, five, even 10 years, and you can just strip it right out and it comes out in one piece, and then you can just reseal the corner, which is really good. That's why we love this stuff. And now I wanna show you how we apply it and then how we spread it and then make sure that it doesn't leak. First of all, what we like to do is uh, apply a nice thick bead uh, down the back and then also along the bottom and then up to the top. Um, we like to apply a really nice thick bead in the middle and then we dab it down and then we slightly spread it and then it covers the um, seam fairly well. <clears throat> First I kind of blow away the little granules that are in the way and then I start at the bottom here and work myself up towards the to top on the back and then I also apply it on the bottom. It may look like much, but you'd rather want a little bit more, not too much obviously, but you want a little bit more um, so you don't want your corners to start leaking. Just kind of like that roughly. And I usually take a little bit of water um, so it doesn't stick as much to my fingers. <clears throat> a little bit in the gutter, a little bit on my hands, and then I start pressing it down into the se seam, into the corners and the flaps, so everything kind of gets pressed in there. 
and then I start spreading it, not pulling it from the center, but more from the edge, just like so. And then just keep going all the way around. Kind of like that. And then I come to the other side, press this a little more, and then I start spreading from the edges out. I don't spread it too far, but you want a nice spread so it covers uh, quite a bit of the gutter uh, corner, because if you ever have to reseal it, um, it's easier to do it if you have more clean material to go by. <clears throat> and just come around the corner. Make sure I cover a little bit the screws a little. Water should never get that high anyways. At the end, I just kind of press it down a little bit more firm onto the seam, just like so. While Max is going around the house sealing the corners, we'll be showing you how to install a downpipe. First of all, before we get started, uh, you can see here on this worksheet we have, we draw up the whole house with all the outlet locations, all the measurements for the gutters, and also the downpipe measurements right here. And if you, we can quickly show you how we do this. Um, usually when we measure a downpipe, you wanna get what we call the gooseneck, which is the pipe that goes from the outlet to the wall. So what we do is we measure from the wall out to the fascia, and then we subtract four inches, which takes care of where the elbows sit inside the pipe. Once we got that measurement, which is 20 inches in this case, um, we go. We can see that the funnel brings down where the pipe is gonna sit on the wall. So we roughly have to go pretty much where it sits and then we go down a foot because usually the downpipe drops around the foot from where it's attached to where it comes to the wall. So what I do is I take this location, it's about six inches from the top, and then plus another foot. So that means my downpipe will end roughly around here, which I'm gonna put my strap on. And then once I got that, I can get my length down towards where I'm gonna put these boxes and then down to where it goes into the drain tile. So I have my pipes all pre-cut already. <clears throat> First, we slip it onto the funnel on the top. Then we have one of our <clears throat> half inch stainless screws and we slide the elbow up as high as we can and simply tack it on. Then what we do, is we take one of our downpipe straps, we bend it and then bend it around the pipe so it fits snugly. <clears throat> Just like that. And then we bring it up to the wall and then we look up towards the top or the soffit and then so make it straight on the soffit. <clears throat> and that keeps it firmly on the wall. And then once I got the first strap on, I take the measurement from the pipe to a certain point of the house and so I can make the pipe straight. As you can see here, the measurement is 10 and 7 eighths to the trim right here. So I'm gonna keep it all the way along 10 and 7 eighths. <clears throat> so this customer wanted uh, funnels and these drain boxes, uh, which catch all the debris that come down, down the downpipe. So I wanna install it 
at the exact location that he had these boxes previously already installed because this is a renovation. So I'm going to put it exactly at the spot where he had them. <clears throat> First I take my measurement again down below here. So make sure it's 10 and 7 eighths, which it is. And then we use our inch and a quarter wood screws to tack it against the wall, just on the inside of the box. Just like so. And then we can put the catch basin back in place. And then we take the rest of our downpipe, shove it into the drain tile, and then bring it up to the drain box. <clears throat> Make sure it's rough. Straight. And then once you have it in place, just the way it is, make sure that the tile covers all the way down towards the drain tile. So it sits nicely and nothing can fall inside of it. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. And thanks again for New Tech Machiner for being out here today and filming this, making it all possible. Please take your time to watch all the other videos that they post. 